Welcome back to my next playthrough series. This time we're going to do Back to the Future, Back in Time. This is an actually a really well-produced game. I love it. Uh, it looks fantastic. Uh, and yeah, so what is the gist of the game? Well, the gist of the game is we've gone back to 1955. It's basically the first movie, the Back to the Future movie, uh, where Marty goes back in time and has to try to get Lorraine and George, his parents, together and get the DeLorean to the clock tower at 10.04 p.m. Uh, to have lightning strike and go back to the future. That's basically the game. So how does the game play? I'm going to leave that up to Rodney Smith. He has an absolutely excellent video on how to play Back to the Future, Back in Time. If you want to check that out, uh, just do a quick search, Rodney Smith, Back to the Future, How to Play, and you'll find that right away. I'm going to be doing a four-player game, so we're going to be playing with Marty, Doc, Jennifer, who was not in there, I know, and Einstein as well, the dog. Uh, yeah, not thematically correct to the first movie. However, uh, there are four players. You can play either two, three, or four-player game. So let's take a look at a couple of the components, where the players start out, the special abilities that Marty, Doc, Jennifer, and Einstein all have, and then we'll get into the gameplay, because the gameplay itself will kind of dictate how the game plays. So instead of trying to explain how to play it, which Rodney Smith already does in his How to Play series, um, we'll just get into it. So we're going to take a look. There are three opportunities that start out on the board. We'll take a quick look at those. And then we're going to look at our characters, Marty McFly, Doc Brown, Jennifer Parker, Einstein, see what their special abilities are and which tiles they have. So first up, we're going to take a look at the three opportunities on the board. And I'm not sure how this is going to focus, but we do have an opportunity up here in the school parking lot. And we have to get these symbols on the dice. We'll see how that works as we play the game. It's get your damn hands off of her. Uh, and we're trying to knock out Biff. And the idea Biff, who starts here at the clock tower, is of course the nemesis of the game. He is trying to drive Lorraine and George apart, which is not what we want to happen. We want them to fall in love so that we exist as Marty McFly, of course. Uh, so there's that. So that's one opportunity. We're going to take a look at the other two. All right, and the other two opportunities that start out on the board, we have one here at George's house. And that's scare George to act. Of course, again, you have to roll these symbols on the dice. We'll see how that works as we play the game. Uh, it requires George. George is here right now. However, that may change. We'll see if we have a turn tracker that we have to follow as well. And then there's reward. We'll get into the rewards and stuff if we succeed. There always will be three opportunities on the board at any one time. So if you complete an opportunity and it goes away, it will be immediately replaced by another one. There's an opportunity deck. I don't know how many cards it is. 24, I think. And they're randomly shuffled. So there we have it. Over at Doc Brown's house, we need to find the gasoline, the cable, and the hook to get the DeLorean set up for time travel. Yeah, easily said. Uh, the Just to let you know, out on the board, the DeLorean parts, we have the cable is at the Hill Valley High School, gasoline is at the South Shops, and the hook is at the Clock Tower. And you have to roll dice, of course, to collect them. So we'll see that as we play. So the third and final opportunity that was out on the board randomly is Doc's Invention. They just need to roll one of these symbols, and away we'll go. So the different symbols, so the heart symbol is influence, uh, it's love symbol, and we have um, fight, movement, and the green ones here are science, I believe, something like that. I probably got them incorrect. Watch Rodney's video, he'll let you know how everything works. Okay, so we're going to take a look at Marty, Doc, Jennifer, and Einstein, and have a look to see how they work. But before we go over there, we're just going to take a look. This is the uh, love tracker, and it's got the pieces of the picture. So if you've watched the first movie, you know the picture starts to fade. If Lorraine and George start not falling in love, it starts here on the zero. We can influence it to go up, and Biff can influence it to go down. Anyway, we'll see that as we're... I guess we'll look at the turn tracker, then we'll look at our characters as well. I know I'm covering everything here at light speed, but like I said, Rodney Smith has a great video on how to play, so we'll just get into playing. So, we're going to be playing a four-player game. So, this turn tracker is double-sided. It's for four and two... four or two players on this side. If you flip it over, it's for a three-player game. There is no solo-player game uh, in, this, uh, in this game at all. So... Uh, the first player that starts will actually put the token on the board here, so it doesn't move during turn one, it just starts here. And you'll see there are trouble cards, I'll explain how those work. Uh, there's level one trouble, level two as you, as you go farther down the track. 
Now, at the end of the track is 10.04.1955, November the 12th, and that's when lightning strikes the clock tower. We have to have the love tracker up in the love area, and we have to have the DeLorean in place to jump. Otherwise, it was the game. <laughs> and if this picture, which I showed you, ever has all six pieces flipped over to the other side, Marty's parents never fall in love, and he never exists, and the game also ends in a loss. All right, let's take a look at our characters, and then I guess we'll do a turn or two, depending on how much time we have in this video. All right, as per usual, I never know exactly how well this is going to focus. However, we do have Marty here. He's going to be our first player. So we're going to have Marty go, then Doc, then Jennifer, then Einstein, and it will just the turns will just keep going in that order till we either win or lose. So Marty's special ability up here is this is heavy. It says once per turn on you on your turn. Uh, you may move Lorraine up to two spaces towards you. And you can see here that these are all his starting tiles. Every character's got five starting tiles. And they're basically, you can either flip them over to move three spaces on the board, orthogonally, cannot move diagonally in the game, uh, or you can use them to roll the dice. On challenges, and you saw some of the symbols there on the opportunity cards, those are the challenges. So we need to roll dice to do that. And I should say, on the dice, um, I guess, well, I'll show you the dice here in a second as well, once we go through our characters. Up next, Doc. All right, so Doc, very similar to Marty, the same board. He's got his five starting tokens that show up here. He can roll dice or use it for three movement. His special ability is once per turn, you may move the DeLorean to the DeLorean's location. So he just, as a free action, can move to the DeLorean's location. And that's good because he wants to start moving the DeLorean to his house so that he can get it all wired up and set up to take the time jump back to 1985. All right, let's take a look at Jennifer. And Jennifer, again, her starting tokens, and she gets to roll. She's more, I guess, into the romance. She's Hopefully we'll use her a little bit to get Lorraine and George to fall in love. Uh, and she has Follow Me, which is her special once per turn ability. Jennifer may move Marty, Doc, or Einstein up to two spaces towards her. All right, everybody, of course, starts in Town Square. So there's that. That's Jennifer. And last up, we'll take a look at Einstein. And last but not least, we have Einstein, of course, Doc's uh, dog from 1985, who is not in this movie. Anyway, we won't worry about that. So again, starter tokens for Einstein, the five of them. Uh, and he's got Bark Bark, which means once per turn, if Biff is within one space of Einstein, you may move Biff up to two spaces. So he basically can chase Biff away. And in the game, we want to keep Biff as far away from Lorraine and George as possible because he starts messing with the love tracker and knocking it backwards, which we do not want. Okay, what else are we going to take a look at? Uh, we're going to take a look at the dice. We're going to take a look at the really cool pre-painted <laughs> DeLorean miniature that comes with the game. So the production of this game, really impressed with it, really like it. Let's take a look at the dice, the DeLorean, and I guess we're going to start with Marty. Okay, so we do have a 3D dice tower here that we can use. I'm, I'm going to be using my own dice tower, of course. And the DeLorean, here it is at its starting space over the school parking lot. It is a pre-painted little plastic miniature. And man, is it ever cool. Like, just what an added touch to the game. It could have just been a cube or something, but really cool production value. All right, let's take a look at the dice. Dice are all pretty much the same, and what I mean by the same is they have, uh, well, you'll see, it doesn't matter. We'll grab one, and it's this is the love die. So basically, every die has got two biffs on it, not good. It has two wilds on it, it has a single of its own type, and it has a double of its own type. Uh, so you can see that there. So we'll take a look at the blue one here, uh, Courage Dice. So two biffs, uh, a single, a double, and two wilds. So the, all dice are basically created the same that way. Uh, you can never roll more dice than you have in the game. So you can't roll, say, three uh, of these dice at the same time on your turn because there's only two of them. So you're limited to the number of dice. And you can roll all eight of them if you flip enough tiles. You can assist in the game if you're in the same location as someone else. You can flip your own. You can flip tiles over to assist another character. However, keep in mind when you do that, you're not going to be able to use those tiles on your own turn because they will already be flipped over. All right, I think I've said enough. So let's get into, I guess, we're going to have Marty McFly here going first. Every, all of our characters start in Town Square. Biff starts up here at the clock tower. 
Lorraine and George start at their respective houses. Let's go to the turn tracker and we'll do we'll do my, Marty's turn for this episode. All right, so as I said, the first turn of the game, you actually take the cube itself and it goes on. We're playing a four player game. You see the four P here for four players. Boom, it goes on here. Well, what do we do? Well, we follow the iconography on the graph and do what it says. So right now we need to pull a level one trouble card. After that, we will pull a movement card and then it will be Marty's turn to take actions. So first up, I'm gonna zoom out. We're gonna pull, uh, we have a deck here of trouble cards. So shuffle these up. And we're gonna be pulling the first one, having a look at it. So I guess we can do that right here. Looks like the camera will focus nicely. So we have Gang Smashes Doc's Mailbox. It's gonna be a Doc Brown's house effect. Each DeLorean part tile requires an extra uh, science to, to, oh man, to get it. We can go here and get rid of this by rolling that symbol. That's gonna end up at Doc Brown's house. Man, that's not good. Yes, and I should say all the trouble cards are exactly what they sound like, trouble. So we'll just go ahead and we'll put the trouble card right here at Doc Brown's house, along with his opportunity. And we do need to collect the three pieces. So trouble already brewing on the board for us in 1955. All right, the next thing up here, you can just see it is the movement card. So there's a deck of 24 movement cards and we're gonna take a look at the first one. And what does it say? It says move George to uh, move George clockwise two spaces and then Biff is going to activate twice. So let's get to the main board and do that movement card. All right, so this is actually pretty good. Uh, move Biff, or sorry, move George clockwise two spaces. Well, of course, clockwise this way, counterclockwise that way. So George is here at his house. He's going to move two spaces. Guess what? He ends up at Lorraine's house. So he's sitting here with Lorraine right on because we can then do a love challenge if the two of them are together uh, and then we have biff activating twice well what does biff do in his turn when he activates well of course he tries to move towards either george or lorraine whichever one of them is closer to him if he's in the same space as them for every biff symbol on a movement card or on the dice you roll which you'll see here in a minute uh, will cause the love tracker to go negative one point wherever it is. Okay, so Biff's going to move twice. Uh, of course, it's all orthogonal movement. Biff, Lorraine, and George can never move into or through Town Square at all. So uh, Biff cannot go one, two this way. Uh, all of the, the Lorraine, George, and Biff characters are always just going to move around the outside of the track. However, our main characters can, in fact, go through Town Square. Okay, so Biff's going to move two spaces because he's got, there's two activations on the card. He's going to try to get down here with George and Lorraine, who happen to be together at the moment. Closest way to get there is this way, so orthogonally, one, two. So he ends up in the south shops. He's trying to get over here and screw up the relationship between Lorraine and George. It's not nice. All right, over we go now. We're going to start with Marty McFly, our first player, and have him take uh, his actions. You can take as many actions as you want, as to, as to many tokens you can flip over. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of thinking. We're going to see what we want uh, McFly to do. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do for Marty is we're going to have him flip over this uh, token to uh, move up to three spaces. So that will allow him to move. And so let's go to the board and have him move up to three spaces. And if you end your movement to do something else, you do not get the rest of your movement. Your movement will just end. So it's up to three spaces. All right, we have a really bad trouble card out here. So I am going to take Marty and he's going to move up to three spaces. So basically big spaces on the board. One, two, gets him to Doc Brown's house. Why are we here? Because he's going to try to uh, take care of the gangs smashing the ma Doc's mailbox. We're going to see if we can get a success there. So I'm going to zoom down a little bit. We're going to see which uh, dice or die, die or dice that uh, Marty's going to flip over his tokens to roll dice. We'll see if we can succeed at this. All right, so what I think, oh boy, th then this game gets rough. So what we're going to do is we are going to have Marty flip over the one die. So he's going to roll one green die. So we flip that over. We're going to go back. He's going to grab the one green die for that. We're going to roll this. We either need to get one uh, success or a science symbol on there we've got a four <laughs> we have a four out of six chance to roll what we need on the die 
uh, otherwise we're going to get a biff and you know how I roll. So let's get out the dice tray and see if we can uh, take care of that trouble happening at Doc's place. Oh yes, the lovely, I'm not going to use the clock tower dice tower in this uh, this playthrough. I'm going to use my own dice tower because this has a nice randomizer inside, whereas the other one's just a flat. Okay, so we need one success on the green. So, here we go, Marty. Don't go. Oh, and I should say you can keep re-rolling the die as many times as you want, hundreds of times if that's what it takes. However, uh, it, once you get a biff symbol on the die, the die is locked and it's done. So let's hope we do not get a biff symbol. We get a lightning, which is a wild card, which means we can have it be any symbol we want. Of course, we're going to want it to be this symbol, which is awesome. So Marty does a good job of uh, getting rid of the gangs that are uh, bugging or smashing up Doc's mailbox. So what do we have here? Reward, we draw one power token. And trouble cards, when they are defeated off the board, do not get replaced. They get replaced by the turn tracker, and you'll see that happening. All right, so he gets a power token. We have a whole bunch of blue power tokens. Uh, I'm just going to randomly grab one. They're all face down over in my little dice tray. So he gets this. Ooh! So this now, uh, he gets, there's eight spaces on his board. We get this face down though, so we can't use it this turn, but it will refresh at the end of Marty's turn. Uh, it's a move up to three. They're all move up to three spaces, but this lets you roll two blue die with one flip of a token. Awesome. So we're going to put that on Marty's player board face down. All right, so this just gets added to his board face down. He now has an extra power. So he's sitting over at Doc's house, uh, and I wonder if he should take on Doc's invention. Or should he take, oh, I don't know, should he try to do a love roll for Lorraine and George, who just happen to be together at the same time? I think we're going to, ah, I think we're going to attempt Doc's invention right now. We're sitting at Doc's house. We're going to take, we're going to use a blue die. So we flip that over. We're going to grab one blue die for that. We're going to go back to Doc's house and see if we can get a success on Doc's invention. All right, so taking a look at Doc's invention here, uh, basically we need to get a, uh, a success on our die, uh, and then we would uh, draw one power card, and we would gain the mind reading helmet. If we succeed, I should, I should say, and we get a biff, then that's not good. All right, can Marty, can lightning strike twice for him? In the good way, it does. He gets another wild symbol, which is a success, because we can turn that into the courage symbol. We now have Doc's Invention, so he's going to get another power token, and he's going to get the Mind Reading Helmet. The Mind Reading Helmet uh, gets, as everything you get in the game is face down. So another power token, I'll just randomly grab one. So he gets, this time, wow, we can roll either, either the Heart and Courage, or uh, just one of them. Like I say, if you flip over this token, you don't have to roll both dice. You can choose one or the other, or you can roll them both, or move up to three spaces. This is going to go face down on his player mat, and then we have to fish out the mind reading helmet, which uh, is part of this. There's a fairly large deck of uh, cards here, and you don't randomly use them because you just find items. As you just saw, we completed that mission or that uh, challenge. So the mind reading helmet, it's going to, we're going to get it in the exhausted form, but what does it do for us? On your turn, when you draw a movement card, draw two, choose one and discard the other. Cool. So on Marty's turn now, not this turn, of course, but when his next turn comes up, he's going to be able to do that. All right, let's go put that token on his board face down. He still has some things he can do. All right, so we're going to take the uh, helmet and we're going to place it face down next to his character. And we're also going to take the power token, which we just got. And it is also going to be face down on his board. All right, we have another cunning plan for Marty. Lorraine and George are together. So we want them to fall in love and produce Marty, of course, <laughs> as well as his brother and sister. So we're going to take this die or this token we're going to flip it over for three movement and then we're going to move three spaces over to Lorraine's house all right so Marty's right here over Doc's place did a super job uh, he's going to move three spaces one two three 
And he ends up here at Lorraine's house with George and Lorraine, which is nice because now we can do a love challenge. So basically we're trying to get Marty or trying to get M M M George McFly and Lorraine to fall in love. And yeah, that's part of our <laughs> the part of the success of our game. All right, let's go back to Marty's board. We're going to flip over another token, grab a die and get out the dice tray and see what we can do. All right, so Marty has one final token left to flip over and for that he will grab the red love die and we're going to take that over to the dice tray at Lorraine's place and see if we can get George and Lorraine to get a little bit further along on the love track. And of course I immediately forgot the opportunities as I'd mentioned earlier when you finish one you immediately draw another one. So before we do this roll we're going to draw another opportunity because you always have three on the board at any time. Uh, play with the Starlighters, Hill Valley High School. Um, so we're going to go and put this at the Hill Valley High School. That would not have changed my decision for what Marty was going to do, but I just have to keep in mind lots of rules. You have to always have three opportunities on the board at all times. So we did get Doc's helmet. Should have replaced that. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to see if we can get, let's get a double love. Now, if we get a Biff, that's not good. Okay, let's roll the die. Come on, Marty. Three successes. That would be just wild. No, of course not. Of course not. Why would why would he get three successes? Although two out of three ain't bad. Uh, we do get a Biff, so the dice is locked. We can't do anything about it. What does that mean? It means Biff's going to move one space. Well, he's going to activate, so he's going to move one space towards George and Lorraine. Damn it! All right, so where's Biff? Well, he's at the South Shops, and he moves one space right in here to Lorraine's house. So he's uh, he's interfering. He doesn't not going to interfere, but he is now in the same space as Lorraine and George, and that is not good. <laughs> it is not good at all. All right, we're going to go. Uh, it's the end of Marty's turn. He has basically done everything he can do. Uh, so we're going to go and flip over all of his tokens, and I think that's probably going to be the end of our episode for today. Alright, so at the end of the turn, what you basically do is you just flip over all of your tokens, and any uh, equipment items you have as well. And there you go, they're all flipped back over, so you can see now he's got a pretty good arsenal of tokens, and you can never have more than eight. Uh, you can have more than eight tokens during your turn, but you always have to discard down to just eight because you only have eight spaces on your card. So you can have nine or ten if you complete a bunch of uh, opportunities or what have you, uh, but you can never have more than eight on your board at the end of your turn. All right, up next will be Doc. Uh, so I'm going to zoom out and we're going to wrap up our episode for today. All right, so I'm no master at this game by any stretch, and of course my die rolling usually sucks uh, in my playthroughs. Currently, we have Lorraine and George together at their house, which is good, but we also now have Biff breathing down their neck, uh, and that's not good news. Of course, we have Doc, Jennifer, and Einstein up in Town Square, but the first thing we're going to have to do on Doc Brown's turn, he's going to be up next for our playthrough uh, tomorrow, and we're going to have to go with Turn Tracker, so that's not going to be good. All right, so thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, likes. really helps out my channel. This is Back to the Future, Back in Time. And we're trying to get Marty to have, to get Lorraine and George to fall in love and then get the DeLorean back to 1985. Can we do it? Oh my God, I don't know. This, this game, I do believe, is super tough to win. But it's also very thematic, super well-produced components. I really, really like it. We'll see what happens. So thanks so much. We'll see you in the next episode.